Hello folks, I am back with the firearms review and I was recently at the range with a buddy of mine and he really liked that particular firearm I was firing at the range and I said, uh, yeah, I would sell it to him. He asked me for it and I said, yeah, I would sell it to him. So I decided I wanted to uh, replace that firearm and let me get the elephant out the room real quick. As you see in front of you, the box is a Springfield Armory box. Uh, let me say this out front. I am not happy with what Springfield Armory uh, did a few years ago regarding uh, Second Amendment rights. But however, I think time has passed a bit and I think we can somewhat move forward, somewhat move forward. Uh, the other thing is, is because I like Springfield Armory 1911 uh, pistols and I don't really have that many. I only have one outside of this one, but we'll get into that a little bit later. What I'm going to show you now is the Springfield Armory 1911 trophy match. And the trophy match is uh, one of those firearms that I wanted. I wanted a 1911 that was that was a competition slash target uh, firearm. And Springfield Armory, like I said, makes really good 1911s. And I can tell you this, I really like uh, their uh, products. I do have a uh, 1911 loaded from them, but let's get into this one right here. This is going to be a 45 ACP uh, caliber. The weight is going to be kind of a hefty 41 ounces, and it, the height is going to be 5.7 inches as well as the barrel length is going to be five inches, which is pretty much standard government model. And it is a match grade barrel. Uh, also, the length is going to be uh, 8.6 inches, as well as the, as you see here, it has adjustable rear sights. And you'll see there's a fiber optic front sight. Uh, it has G10 grips. Uh, match grade trigger and as you notice the this is going to uh, the frame is uh, forged stainless steel and uh, you will also notice that with this uh, forged uh, stainless steel uh, frame you'll see there is front strap checkering is what I like on all 1911s that is it is uh, 20 lines per inch checkering on this uh, mentioning that the uh, the trigger, I said it's a match grade trigger, it is a 4.5 to 5 pound adjustable trigger. And the top of the slide, as you see, you have front serrations and rear serrations, but you also have serrations on the top uh, to for the glare that's on here. And I'm going to try to focus in. And it pretty much covers the length of the firearm itself. If my camera would seem to act right. And that's the uh, the uh, serrations up top. Now, what I like about this firearm is one of the uh, things that I really like is, as you see, it's two-tone. Now, this is sort of a special addition, if I can say that, uh, because the original version of the, uh, the Trophy Match was not configured like this. Uh, on the box, which I'm going to show you, on the box here, you're going to see on front here, it, it says uh, 1911 A1 Custom Pistol Number 3. So I think this is configuration number 3 uh, from the original version. The original version pretty much looked like this one. This is uh, the my loaded um, 1911 Springfield. Uh, th now the difference bet between that it uh, it had the front checkering on here, but it had the Coca Bola grips on here. Everything was totally steel with the adjustable sights that you see on this firearm, and it had a full full length two piece guide rod. On this particular version. Now, my, uh, this particular version, 
it has a the standard government plug. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that out and get go. Uh, I just ordered some Wilson Combat uh, full length guide rod with the with the with the plug as well as the shock buffer. And the reason being is sometimes when I was shooting, uh, it felt slightly flippy because I compared the two when I was shooting them. It felt a little bit slightly f flippy. And usually when I'm just used to uh, 1911s with uh, full length guide rods. Now, the only other two um, 1911s that I have that do not have a full length guide rod are basically my SIGs. Now, I think the difference is because the SIG has that uh, accessory rail at the bottom of the 1913 pick rail. I think it adds a little weight and therefore I don't notice it as much like I did notice it on this one, even though this is a hefty uh, firearm. So what I'll do is I'll get that, uh, that guide rod assembly piece and I'll put that in there. And it was just slightly flippy, just basically slightly flippy uh in shooting this it, it's a, it's a really good shoot it shoots accurate uh better than me the only problem i had was it wasn't really sighted in so therefore there are the adjustable sights right here and unfortunately when i was at the range as i was shooting my targets were a little off center so i tried to use the screwdriver I had and the one at the range, as you see, is a little bit of marring there. But I was trying to use that uh, screwdriver to get it to center like I wanted to. And the proper fit uh, screwdriver I have is basically, uh, I had that at home, so I was able to adjust it properly. But at the range, that's why you should bring tools at the range just in case you have to make adjustments. Uh, that's the only problem I had with this particular firearm is that they did not have a, a standard die a screwdriver for that because everything was too thick. So if they would, I think a different sc uh, screw set assembly, I, I know there's probably other screwdrivers out there, but it should have, if they would include that with the firearm itself, that would be great. They do have a tool that comes with the adjustable uh, trigger, but I would have liked them to have that. So it, it's it's just something minor. Uh, I was using the as you see, there's the marks right here. This is this comes from the sh uh, the brass that was uh, that was ejecting out, and they kind of hit it and marred it a little bit right there. So it was extracting around. So there were no malfunctions. But that's what you see here. That's why those little marks are right there. Not a big deal to me because this is going to be added to my training firearm list. I use the Sig Scorpion 1911 uh, for training and I'm going to use this one as a training firearm because hopefully I'll get to do some competition uh, uh, next, uh, next year. Uh, one thing that I like also, which I forgot to mention when I was giving the specs is, is this Magwell. This Magwell was already, um, made with it. This is not aftermarket. Uh, the G10 uh, grips and this came uh, directly with it. Uh, let me show you some targets real quick and I'll give you some other afterthoughts. Like I said, with the targeting I had, the problem I had was, these were the first shots right here. This is at 10 yards and it was coming over this far. So I, I you, of course, you know, I want the shots here. So I tried again. And as I was uh, trying to uh, adjust this, the rear sights, my targets uh, was coming here. In addition, Pushing this back a little further, maybe about 15 yards, I'm still trying to make some adjustments and it was not working to the way I wanted to. Like I said, I did make the best adjustments I could. That's how I got these. But I was kind of stringing them a little bit up and down. And I was trying to, uh, the t like I said, I was trying to see the target like I wanted to. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't breaking my wrist. So I asked my friend 
that asked uh, to check with me if I was breaking my wrist. Most right-handed shooters would do one of these numbers. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't breaking my wrist to, to the left, which is usually a problem with uh, with shooters who are right-handed. They'll break to the left uh, to, to the left and down. But he said it wasn't uh, my, uh, my mistake. It's just, it's just that this probably had to be sighted in. I will take this out again and then try to shoot this again and see how it works. Uh, in addition to the other upgrades, uh, the the minor upgrade is I'm going to. Uh, I ordered a uh, from Wilson Combat a black uh, extended slide release. Um, you know, most 1911s I can't reach the the slide release anyway. I do do the overhand slide uh, takedown, but I'm not really gripping it like I want to. So I just went with the overhand, uh, the old fashioned way. Other than that, this firearm is a really good firearm. Um, I will be doing some extensive shooting with this, along with my um, with my Scorpion 1911. Maybe there will be a comparison uh, down the line. But the other thing I wanted to mention was also the price. Now, I've said previously before uh, regarding my 1911 loaded, uh, a lot of 1911s cost in the neighborhood of over a thousand dollars this was not over a thousand dollars for some reason uh springfield armory is able to keep it at least maybe 300 to 400 dollars less than that uh thousand dollar mark and i think it's because uh it depends on what dealer you go to and wherever your location is uh the the other with with pricing, it, it's different. You got to hunt around. You got to shop. I bumped into this by accident, and this was uh, pretty much a, a special sale item. So, it, it bumping into this as a special sale item, I jumped on it right away. Uh, a lot of times uh, when I show uh, certain firearms, uh, especially 1911s, a lot of people ask me, "Is it uh, California compliant?" This is not California compliant, and it is written on the box here, uh, not on the uh, California DOG, uh, DOJ roster. So for those of you who are, who are looking for this, uh, uh, I guess try to contact uh, uh, manufacturers to find out which firearms that are uh, California compliant. Other than that, folks, I'm really enjoying this firearm. Um, I just want you to stay safe, happy shooting, hashtag 2A.